Play to Lose is an incredibly fun series on the channel, but it can bring some heartbreaks. In today's video, we are going to be playing in quite a tricky vehicle. This is the WZ113, a tier 10 Chinese heavy tank, a vehicle that excels in mobility, damage per minute, and even ridiculously good penetration, now sitting 380 millimeters on the premium, which is kind of insane when you think about it. The only real downside of the 113 is that it's not the most armored. The upper plate is pretty poor. Earlier today, I was messing around in this vehicle, and a 5A penned me on the upper plate, three shells in a row, with AP ammo. So yeah, the vehicle's armor is definitely not the strength, while the turret is obviously super good. But, because you have so much penetration, and you have a decent chunk of alpha at 420, paired with three thousand damage per minute it just makes an incredible experience as i said it has downsides gun depression isn't amazing and it also doesn't have any spaced armor on the sides meaning that if somebody shoots at your flat side the chances of them bouncing is basically slim to none the armor department is definitely lacking with this tank but it's kind of an in-between with a soviet style heavy kind of like the is4 and is7 Paired with a maybe Object 260, it's kind of in between there, where it's got some armor, you'll get bounces, it's got decent mobility, but it's also got the DPM. Every time we get on this map, my face is like super bright, although today, it actually looks like my face is fine on camera. Okay. Interesting. Oh, you know why? It's because my, my lights are reset. Let me dim them a bit. I'm like super blinded from them. All right, that, that should be better. So here we are in our first game. Up against us, we have a T-54E1, Object 907, and a 1 to 1 Venus. All right. Well, we are going to head over towards medium side, as this is a fairly mobile tank. I usually go to medium side as it is, because as I've talked about in the past, you will get more wins going to medium side than heavy side. So we got the 907 spotted, we've got the 121B spotted. For some reason, our waffle is playing super duper aggressive. Got the 5041 off to our side, let's aim in, and there you go. Nice 370 damage shot. We back up just enough so that we don't get hit by the 907. Well, we got hit. We don't get penned by the 907. It's what I should say. All right, let's move on up here. We are going to be spotted by the 907 moving up, but that's not too much of a worry. We're obviously going to be playing fairly aggressive, and uh, we're going to see if we can get some damage into our opponents. 907 pens me. I'm actually surprised right in our turret weak spot, but we hit him back pretty dang hard for 500. We're going to reload here again. There you go. 460 shot right there. Let's just keep on wiggling. We do get shot by the 121B, but let's be real. This guy is absolutely screwed. Wow, that shell did not go where I wanted it to. Thankfully, this is actually a fairly good vehicle at side scraping, and as we can see, the 121B did not end up penetrating us. So we're going to aim in a shell right on this tank, 440, and the 121 is going to aim it on the waffle. That's honestly a flat dub. Our waffle has no camo and really is not instilling a lot of confidence in me, so if he takes a lot of the shots for us, that's just a flat dub. We're going to roll over this ridge real quick, get a free shot into the enemy 54E1, and uh, yeah, this is looking like a fairly easy win right off the bat. We have already completely smashed through medium side, and they may have some TDs in the back. I'm not fully aware of what they have, but because the 95 is spotted, well, that's the only vehicle left being the FE2 and 7 Badger. All right, well, we are going to get penned by the Badger. Okay, that made very little sense. I'm going to be completely honest. That was super duper disappointing. Let's aim it on the Badger. We do have that 380 millimeters of heat pen. I also don't want know why the Badger shot HE at us. That's basically telling me he's not a good player, so we're just going to rush him at this point. Maybe he just accidentally loaded HE and didn't mean it, but uh, I doubt that. So we're going to try and get to a side. There you go. That's one easy shot for 403. We've got our adrenaline on. This is going to allow us to get even more damage out. Another easy shell into the Badger. Just like that, we've ripped off quite a substantial chunk of of this player's HP already. All right, we're just going to push off to the side so that we can pen him. There you go. I did load heat, which took away a bit of our damage, but it still should get the job done. Um, I don't think our 1-2-1 is going to finish him off. Oh, he did. I'm actually surprised he penned that. I did not think that was going to be the case. All right, well, let's move over to the T-95. The 1-2-1-B is... Bruh, there's no way this guy's that blind, right? He apparently is that blind. All right, well, thankfully, we are not that dumb, and uh, we're going to deal with the T95 accordingly. Oh, that's still a pretty healthy E5. All right, we're going to back up then, and we're going to take apart this player pretty safely. 
Ah, that was an unfortunate shot. But, oh, pfft, there's no way that waffle just hit that. I can't, I can't. That waffle just hit the 95 on the moving pads. You know, I, I can't even get mad, really. Uh, that's, that's pretty freaking amazing. All right, let's aim it on the E5 turret, Cheek. There you go. Nice 408 roll. You know what? I give the waffle credit. He did his job. He helped us out. He actually, if I had that waffle do what he did in that game on every game and he didn't die and help me, I'm not going to complain. He did his job. So not too bad. We got a second class, 5,000 damage, pretty solid first game. And uh, we made 45,000 credits. That's not too bad at all. Okay, let's keep going. This is just our first game. And for all we know, this could turn out to be a very, very short video. Up against us, we have a T125, Type 71, E75, and an IS-8. So we have a player number M103, which isn't instilling an insane amount of confidence. And we have an AMX 5120, which is also not instilling an insane amount of confidence. All right, well, we're going to use the good mobility on this tank once again, and we're going to try to get fairly aggressive. We are basically the fastest heavy here. Uh, which, well, apart from, like, the AMX, but that's not even really a heavy, let's be completely real. The AMX got a bounce, though, so I'll give him credit. Let's just push on up. Hopefully we can squeeze past the AMX, bro. Ain't no way you're gonna poke that. You have no armor. Bruh. Alright, well, let's see. There you go. Nice pen into the E5 turret. The problem is they're gonna keep shooting this AMX. Bro, stop poking! Oh, okay. Well, there's nothing I can do about that to uh, be real, but we're going to get another nice shell into the Type 71, and even though the AMX is not very smart, he is uh, distracting the Type, which means we can get another pen into his vehicle, and he got bled even more. That's actually really, really solid. All right, we got the E5 in front, bounces us, we get a nice pen into the lower plate, we get a 500 max roll. You know what? Wargaming must have nerfed the alpha of the Type 71, because it is not rolling... 500 is not a proper max roll. It's 400 alpha now. They must have nerfed it. Okay. You know what? Our team's doing a, a solid job here. We're going to finish off the enemy type. And now all we have left is a patent. And we're going to try and get some damage into this patent. Like so. A bonk. Thank you. 397. Unfortunately, we do get hit by the grill. But that's not too much of a worry. Let's just uh, see if we can get any more out. You know what? what? Like, why? Why are you doing that? Our yo's going to shoot you. I'll just stare at him, like, huh? Alright, let's see, maybe we can get a... Yeah, he's gonna get shot by the Yo, which is completely fine with me. Goodbye, t 25 I really don't know why that player didn't focus the vehicles off to his side. Now, this is still not a guaranteed win, but we do get the clear into the patent. And with the C-75 focusing me, this is... Yeah, it's a win now. We're gonna get an easy pen into the side of the E-75. I'm just gonna let him finish off, or let our E-75... <laughs> Let our E3 finish off the E75, and I'm going to get the clear on the grill. I had a bit of a brain fart there, but we're good. We, uh, we are still winning, and that's really the most important of all. We can see that there is a tank in base C, and we're going to head right over there. We've managed to conserve a decent chunk of our HP. Weirdly enough, the IS-8 is right in front of us. Okay. We also got the 121B over here. I could care less, though, to be out. Oh, you know what? I'm going to turn for the 121B, because uh, the IS-8 is now basically a cripple. Unfortunate. We've done 4,000 damage, so even if we don't get any more out, I'm not really worried. Just a little unfortunate that our shell did not pen the side of the 121B. Is that player going to run? Most likely, bruh. Ain't no way the IS-8 just shot me. Ain't no way, bruh. Ain't no way. What is up with everybody on the enemy team wanting me? All right, well, the IS-8 is no longer going to shoot at us, and even though we don't have as much DPM as the 121B, he apparently doesn't know how to aim, so, uh, yeah, we got two bounces there, and another 5,000 damage game. Let's see. Ah, I was kind of hoping we could kill him with the ram. He actually took 12 off, off us, which doesn't really make much sense, but a win is a win. Two 5,000 damage games now. We did get a little trolled from our gun this battle, but... We did a good job. 1,400 damage blocked. An ace. Why did we get an ace this game but not the other? We did more on the Oasis game, helping our team with the mediums, than we did on this game. But I guess because we got four kills. I don't know. Either way, uh, I'll take it. Not a bad game at all. And uh, a dub's a dub. So, yeah. Also, they must have nerfed this vehicle's alpha. That must be the change. Let me see. Yeah, it is 400 now. Okay, I thought it was 420. I guess I guess I missed that change. I thought it was the IS-4 that lost 20 damage a shot, but now that I think about it, it wasn't the IS-4, it was this vehicle. 
That's why its DPM went a little bit worse. But... As we went over, the damage is still plenty. As you watched in that game, we easily bled our opponents. Like, we have more damage per minute than a T-125 running rammer, and we have much more pen, which is kind of insane. I mean, the E5 has a lot of pen, 274, but we still have six more millimeters of pen. 280 is, uh, it's a pretty insane number when you think about it. So, this battle, we have the arch nemesis of the 113, the triple seven. We have the E100, which normally would be a threat, but judging that we have so much penetration, the turret on that vehicle is, I mean, it's basically butter. So I'm not too worried about that. Same for the 777. We should be able to cut through the roof of that vehicle quite easily, but I should also mention the armor on this tank is quite weak, again, on the upper plate. I gotta really hope here that our Sheridan and T-54 do their jobs properly, because we are up against only one medium. That means if our medium work together and they hold the hill we should be able to win this i'm gonna ping the hill we'll see if they uh if they do anything bruh what is this sheridan doing okay well that's not instilling confidence in me but we'll see <laughs> uh, i'm sorry that's just it's funny all right uh base c is being captured so we do know that there is a tank over towards c our yo is over here. All right. Well, I'm expecting somebody on our team to step into the base. Man, our Sheridan's got, like, brain lag. Man, see something happen. He's like, duh, 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 duh. All right. Well, let's hope that somebody captures the base. I was thinking about it, but I'm like, nah, we got to get up this hill as fast as possible, especially if our Sheridan's not going to do the spotting for us. So, yeah, I'm going to move up here. We're going to see if we can get a shell out. Oh, we actually got the E3 off to the side. There you go. Nice 380 damage shot. Let's back up before possibly one of the other two tank destroyers starts aiming at us. Let's reload. All right. We should be unspotted at this point. Not seeing anything off to our side. Okay. Let's push up. And uh, maybe we can get some damage into the side of Hooch over here. He's going to keep backing up, which is going to allow us to get another easy shot. There you go. Nice 395 tap. 268 and yo, finish him off. So even though we were down on base cap, just because this... I don't even know why the E3 did that, to be real. Like, oh boy, but there goes our, our 183. Not surprised at all. As usual, uh, 183 players are expected to be the worst players on your team. All right, well, we got the 777 off to the side. And let's aim it on the side of his tank. Oh, that was a lucky shot. He stopped, like, randomly, and I thought he was going to keep going. Uh, but, yeah, we still got it out. There you go. Another easy shot right into the 777 turret cheek. Great example of the fantastic levels of pen this vehicle does indeed have. Well, we are now down on base cap, even though we were up before. We got the 100 in front of us. Easy shell into his vehicle. The problem right now is I just realized I'm the only person holding this entire line. Like, what the heck? I'm not holding that anymore. I'm, I'm gone. That's death. I don't know what the heck our team's doing. Guys, I'm going to be honest. This is looking like our loss. It's going to be game three as of right now. Our team could have very easily held the hill, but for some reason they don't want to do that. They'd rather just not. So, uh, yeah, not, not great uh, confidence I have right now. We're going to get a nice shell to the T-30. That was a good shot. And because the T-30 reverse is slow, slow, should be able to get another shell out. There you go. All right, let's hope our Yo, nice, the Yo does get behind the T-30, and he's going to get two shells, and we finish off the T-30. Nice. Okay, that's important. I'm expecting death to roll up on us very, very shortly. If I can hold this line long enough, though, it's a possible win. We can see they've just stepped in the base A. The 268 is very, very low on health, which is not good for us. Got the 4202 off to the side. Come on. Good. All right. I'm saving our 268 right now, which is obviously really, really important. Let's save it on the 4202. Nice heat shell right into the player's turret armor. Got the 777 off to the side. And, oh boy, we got the Yag over here as well. Another just fun little death tank. All right. Let's save it on the Yag. There you go. Nice shot. Let's hope that our 268 doesn't die to the 4202. I heard him shoot. All right. Come on, Yag. And he pens that. All right. Well, that's rather interesting goes right through my turret cheek. Well, nothing I can really do about that. Um, yeah, this is looking not very fun right now. I'm going to be real. We're going to, well, I'm not going to back off yet. We're going to wait for the Yag to drive up, and we're going to get a free shell into his vehicle. Then, before he's able to hit us, we're going to back off the cliff. I do have support from the Sheridan. I've got support from the rest of my team. All right. Uh, that's not good, though. That's not good at all. I'm going to back up instead of going forwards because I feel like I have more support on the back than I do on the front. 
So let's keep on reversing. It is a three versus four right now, but our Yo is putting himself in a really, really exposed position. And it would not surprise me if that Yag tried to shoot him. Let's push off to the side. There you go. 4202 gets shot. And now we're going to get a shell into the 4202. Really, that was uh, super disappointing. But we may have gotten him killed. Please, bruh, yo, you had the shell, I thought. Well, wow, that's really disappointing. Um, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do. Nice! There you go. You know what? We're going to win. I really thought this was going to be a loss. I've got to be honest. Like, this was looking like a big, fat, stinking defeat. This Yag obviously making a very bad play here. I'm going to back him right out into the open. And, I mean, what are you going to do, bro? Like, <laughs> sometimes I question the thought process behind players. And that was definitely a questionative moment right there. I don't know if we did over 3k, but we definitely did our job this game. We helped out our team. We got out a lot of damage. All the very important things. Uh, we got the 100 who... I can pen if he shows me his lower play. Oh, we did a lot more than I thought. We did 5,000 again. Well, three games, 4,800 in every single one. We definitely deserve an ace for this battle. If we don't get it, I'm going to be so disappointed. Come on! Give me that golden ace. We only got one kill. And as we saw before, one kill did not equate. Bruh. Bruh. We put so much more effort and work into this game than we did the previous one. It's a great example on how ace bars are completely skewed. Getting kills should not just equate to more XP. I mean, I understand why. But we carried our team in this game. We distracted the T-30, which got him clipped by the Yo. We got the 4202 tracked, which got him shot by the Yo. We had the Yag baited into the open, got him killed because of that. And we held the hill, which meant that the enemy had to drive up, trying to force us off. I mean, bruh, that, that always gets me so salty when I put a lot of effort in and we don't get an ace. And then you have a game where you're just kind of farming the opponents and you get an ace. Like, oh. And it wasn't like we did different damage numbers. We did the same damage for both games. So just, uh, just kind of a, a very sad moment. All right. Another game up against us. We have two one eight threes. We only have one. So that's an advantage there because we also just have an extra tier 10, that means. We have a batch. Yeah, we just have a flat advantage in terms of uh, in terms of tier 10s. But it doesn't mean that our players are going to be better. Nope, they are not. We are going town, I guess. Okay, well, our E75 looks like he's going to go low and capture base C. So I'm going to go up top. The problem is that we have a stock conqueror, if you guys didn't notice that. Yeah, it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big L right there. We're just going to move fast. We can see that. Oh, the... That was a terrible shot. I mean, it wasn't, like, a bad shot for me. It was just a bad shot. Uh, let's see. We got the E6 off to the side. And... Bruh. Unforb. Very, very unforb. That E6 getting into that position could easily entail a defeat. Like, I'm gonna tell you now. Um, not really sure what we're gonna be able to do about it either. Well, we got a nice shell into the 92-1. And the E6 does get shot. Let's put on our adrenaline. I'm hoping that the E6 tries to back out. We can get a shell in. The E6 is kind of in a tricky situation right now. We get another shell into his vehicle. That's obviously really, really good. And he's going to make a 41st cent play. So, never mind. It's looking like it's a win. Ah, oh, come on, gun. All right. Well, the mouse is going to hold that, so I'm not too worried there. Um, even if the mouse gets rushed, he's in a pretty solid situation. We need to push over here. We need to... Oh, my... Never mind. This is looking like it could actually be a loss. Our 183 is going to try and help, but I need to hold these guys off over here. The IS-7 is now going to move up. We bounce the IS-7. Really unfortunate. But I need to hold these players off. Like, the mouse is doing his job over there. I'm doing my job over here holding off these players. There you go. Nice shot into the IS-7. That is a Conqueror. Not too worried about that, though. Let's reload again. Oh boy, we got the yo rolling off to our side as well. All right, nice, nice shots in. Let's just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Mm, I'm not liking this even slightly. Our mouse is getting absolutely rolled. Our STB is not even AFK, by the way. Just, yeah, this this is our defeat. We, we had our last game. Okay, okay. We had our last battle, which was looking kind of sus. This game is looking a lot. You know what? I'm right, I take it back. We're winning. How? How are we winning this now? What? I'm losing my mind, guys. I'm actually losing my mind. I really, like, I, I don't even know what to say, to be honest. All right, let's, uh, let's HE the conch. Nice 460 damage. 
Um, let's just stay behind the 183 right now. And let's get a nice shell in now that our, our 183... I, I legit thought we were going to lose this. I didn't look at how many tanks we had left on our team. I was like, yeah, we, we are done. But uh, apparently... <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently we're winning. Are, are you guys like as dumbfounded as I am this game? Every game I've said we've lost, we've we've won. I guarantee the moment I say, oh guys, it'll be an easy victory, we're going to lose instantly. I guarantee it. Uh, that's great. All right, let's finish off the 183. There you go. Wow. What did I just witness? I will give our mouse credit. Very good player. Our STB, worst player of 2023. Like, legit. I, I, I don't know if I've seen a, a less effective player than him in a while. Um, it doesn't even matter what his stats are or anything like that. Like, I don't know if you guys saw what our STB did. Let me go hop back here and show you what he did, all right? Uh, where's our STB? There he is. Watch this guy. He goes in the back corner, knocks down a bush. He has no camo, by the way, and then sits here the rest of the game. That That's his entire battle. Like, we're skipping through. That's it. All the way to the end, he sits there. Huh? Like, what? What? I, I don't even know what to say. Either way, um, we won. We did a decent job. Another 3K plus game. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Very, very interesting, I'm going to be honest. Well, we are on Middleburg. We have up against us some decent tanks. Fosh, M60, Sheridan, Super Conk, E4, ISA, and Emotion. All right, well, we have a mobile heavy. And I'm praying that our mobile heavy goes up top. He's looking up the hill, so I have some confidence in him. Our yo is going up. Hori, if you want to go town, go ahead, bro. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say, but you guys can go town. I like how the TDs, the tanks that always need support from the rest of their team, are the ones that are deciding to go low. And they have a tank down low, being the T124. Well, our yo does get a pen out. Our E6 has decided he's going to go low. Our Yo is surprisingly poking that E4. Yeah, like, why would you poke a tank that has much more damage per shot than you? A little confused on that uh, predicament there. Let's see, E4 is going to keep going. Yep, and E4 is now dead. Very interesting decision from that player. We got a 600 bounce. That would definitely be the Fosh. I would expect that to be the Fosh with the um, stock gun. It's still a solid gun. In fact, it has more damage per minute than the autoloader, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not to be taken lightly, but um, definitely not as threatening as the autoloader. All right, there you go. Nice shot into you, 54, bruh. Okay, we're, bruh. We got hatched. That's so lame. All right, well, let's aim it on the side of the M60. There you go. Easy shot into his turret. That is indeed the Fosh that I thought. Not sure why the M60 is tunneling us, but, uh, bye. <laughs> okay. I don't care. The whole point of heavy is to take shots for your team. And as we know, my teammates are usually the ones that are not very effective. So if I take shots for them, it'll actually help them big time here. All right, we get a nice bounce. There you go. Another pen into the Fosh. Because he's not running the autoloader, we don't need to worry about him. Uh, yeah, this was an incredibly easy victory. I don't know if we're going to deal a lot of damage, but, uh... Yeah, I, I don't even know what to say. That guy's dead. Bat Chat's gonna rush him. Alright, let's reload. And... Bonk! There you go. Nice 390 damage shot. All that's left is nothing. They're all dead. Wow. Well, that was an easy game. Uh, we did 2800. Not too bad, to be honest. I thought we did a bit worse. Maybe like 2k, but... Uh, no, we did 2800 damage there, which we can see right here. We, uh, we farmed a bit. We helped our team. We blocked. I'm glad I went up, because... Definitely got the clears on the mediums super fast. I will still say all the time, every time, you shouldn't go town on Middleburg. Take it from a player like myself. Like, I am a person who goes 75% win rate on any month in Blitz. I average 3,500 plus damage. You would think I know what the best ways to play the game are after 80 plus K games. There are people that will still tell me in the comments that I'm wrong, even though I've played this game more than the majority of other players, and it just doesn't make sense. Going up on Middleburg, especially in your, if you're in a tank that doesn't have a downside of going up, like if you're in an E6 or a Yo, you have a good power to weight. You have a great acceleration curve, even with the yo. And you've got gun depression. Why would you put a tank that has gun depression town? The hoary doesn't even make sense either, because, again, it's a big old box. Why would you put it on flat ground? I don't know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, in general, general advice, don't go town on Middleburg. I stress it every single time I make a video, but um, sometimes you just can't get them all. 
All right, well, here we are up against us. We have an AMX 50B, T57 Heavy, 752. Okay, I mean, they got some strong tanks. We're going to chill in this spot. I was going to go to the other position, but I don't know. I don't even know why I drove here, to be honest, but we can see the 50B is pushing over towards this way. All right, come on, keep going, 50B, keep going. I know that the 50B has terrible camo values. Oh, is he going to push up here? He is. Classic 50B player, even though he spotted and had a light bulb letting him know he was detected. Oh, why are you poking, bro? Stop poking. Stop poking. You're killing yourself, bro. Bro, not George Destroyer, bro. Those are the kind of players that get me very salty when they end up on my team. Because, like, there's nothing you can do to combat a player like that getting on your team. It's just, well, he's he's gone. <laughs> that's, that's really all there is to say. Let's uh, let's reload, aim it on the triple seven. There you go. Big low roll, only 350, but a pen's a pen. The enemy tanks appear to have gone somewhat towards medium side. Got the 26A, not able to shoot that player. Got the VK90, the T30, okay. Right now, we're just gonna play... Oh, yeah, they still have a decent amount of tanks over here. I did not realize that. And there you go. I was really hoping my Yo wasn't just gonna sit right in front of me. Now, the Yo has a faster intraclip than the 752, but that's if he shoots. And as we saw, he didn't, so he actually had a slower intraclip. We get a nice shell once into the T30, and because the T30 is not looking at us, we get another shell. My yo just drives into me, bruh. Big bruh. Alright, uh, let's just reload. I'm really hoping we don't get shot, but we do. That's really annoying. My yo uh, lost me a lot of health there just because he didn't want to shoot. But we're alive. Again, we're a heavy, so at least we're taking shots. The 57 heavy has no more shells. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a win, so I can't really get mad. Let's reload again. There you go. Nice shot into the 57 Heavy. VK finishes him off. All right. Bro, what is our yo doing? The doctor is in. I think you need to go see the doctor and figure out what the heck you're doing, bro. All right. Uh, let's see. We got the E50M T100LT off to the side over here. It's a little annoying that we should be a bit higher in health. Bro, we've had an E4 this entire time back there. That's, that's a little sad, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, let's aim it on the T100. There you go. Nice 430 damage shot. The uh, T100 is not gonna pen us, yeah. Kind of expected. Not really sure what his plan is, to be honest, because he's, uh, he's dead now. You put yourself in a corner and you're not getting out of it. Either way, you're dead, yeah. Okay. And all that's left is the 268, which I would expect to be somewhere right around this vicinity. But it, it shouldn't matter, I mean... I protect spawn. You know what? I'm not going to get mad at you. You did your job, but to be fair, E4, this is something that I should point out, you shouldn't have to protect spawn if you push with the rest of the team. If our team had had your help, we would have won the heavy side a lot faster, which therefore would have meant we obviously wouldn't have needed to protect spawn because we would have just killed their team faster. So I'm not mad, but uh, I, I honestly didn't even know we had an E4. All right. Well, another victory. Solid game. I would expect us to have done at least 3k damage, which we did. 3,755. We blocked 1,500 and a third class. Also, for any of you that think because I'm making cuts in the video, uh, I am cherry picking the video, the content and I'm actually not winning all these games. Here's your proof. There's our first game on Molendike. Oh wait, no, you didn't see the first game on Molendike. That was a battle I played before recording. Uh, but we got Oasis Palms, Himmelsdorf, Castilla, Faust, Middleburg, and Falls Creek. All one after another. So, no, these games have not been cherry picked. All right, up against us, we have an FE2 and 5B183, and we don't have a 183, so just alone there, we have a big advantage. They have a 4005, we don't. That's another big advantage. The 4005 and 183 are the two worst performing TDs right next to the grill. So because of that, I would say we're in a decent position, but we do have the 57 heavy from last game, and judging that that player did literally nothing until we, like, rushed heavy side, not a lot of confidence. He's also, like, AFK for the early parts of this battle. But we'll see. We have an E5, 57 heavy, and Stritz von K. So, alright. We are gonna play this somewhat aggressive. Hopefully their mediums don't YOLO us, but they only have one. We're gonna push right over here. We got the 57 heavy spotted already. That's not too bad. We are not detected ourselves, which is actually a bit surprising, to be honest. Let's aim in, and come on. Let me get a pendant to you. 
Alright, 57 is going to shoot at my teammate, so we're going to aim it on his side. There you go, nice 300. Oh, no, 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 no. That is not what I want. That right there is a recipe for disaster. You know what's an even bigger recipe for disaster? Getting yolo by an E5. Uh, thankfully, my teammate hit him once, but um, yeah, I'm going to be honest, this is not looking very fun right now. This is looking quite the opposite. We are going to try and play this as smart as possible. We're going to go this way, and we're going to try and leave before I end up dying. Thankfully, we did get out, but a um, yeah, great example of not a great... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Nope. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. VK, please don't. Please don't. Okay, we're good. We're good. Um, whoa. And the VK gets a pendant, which is obviously pretty nice. And there you go, he over-angles, which allows us to get the pennon. I, okay, yeah, clearly this E5 doesn't know how to play. Oh, right, but the VK super low rolls. Thankfully, we got the clear. See, that E5 right there is a perfect example of how NA meta can get a good player killed. Because I'm smart enough to know when I should and should not be making aggressive plays. And I made a fairly aggressive play, but it wasn't anything out of the question what I did with the 2 and 5 beat. Uh, okay, Stratvon's not gonna hit me. I'm gonna... Never mind. Well, he had to damage Damrak for half a second there. We have Adrenaline. I don't know if I'm gonna out-reload him, but I'm willing to take the risk. We did out-reload him. Our VK90 is still healthy. But what I was gonna say is that it's players like that E5 that make a random YOLO that will get away with doing that. Like, he was obviously a very bad player, but he made a really stupid play and still got away with it. That is the fantastic example of a classic NA meta, where people make really dumb maneuvers, get away with the maneuvers for no reason. All right, well, let's just uh, drive over the ridge real quick, see if we can get another shell into you. 268 finishes off my VK90, which is not good news at all. Let's back up. Let's see. 183 is going to start pushing towards us. Let's just aim in on the 183. There you go. Nice shot. 268 will pen me. But as long as we are not dead, that's all that matters. So let's just back on up. 183 shoots. 268's looking at us. Let's wait. Come on. No. Not worth it. Especially with the 405 rolling off to our side. Keep backing up. Keep backing up. Okay. We're all good. But uh, our team is definitely throwing this. We have... Oh my god. That's the same E4. Bro. E4. Move. I, I can't. This guy's not real negative yep you know what i take it back remember i said that e4 was a chill player and he kind of like helped us no i take it back he is not helpful at all man is uh actually useless all right let's see oh there's the 268 come on keep going bro what was that what was that what was that wow wow that was super super disappointing all right let's just chill right here thankfully the 268's doing his job yeah that e4 absolute disaster of a player to be completely real um, yeah, any team, Ooh. okay, we're gonna win, but, um, wow, what a disastrous, uh, gun we had this game, uh, I just, you know what, our 57 Heavy did a good job, our 268 did a good job, good job to these players, this E4, you suck, let's be real, guys, I, I was being kind to him last game, because, like, okay, you know what, it's fair, if you want to hold the flank, you want to help out the team, that's all right, but, the fact that he has still camped in this game, the same player, very disappointing. Uh, definitely going to put in a report for an activity there, because clearly he wasn't active. We had a couple troll shots there when it came to our uh, our gun. We shot at the 183, missed. We shot at the 268, bounced, uh, and then it missed as well. So really disappointing stuff there. This E4, definitely going to get a thumbs down, um, and I'm definitely going to report him for inactivity in battle because nobody likes people that camp and spawn the entire game. It's fine to sit passive when your team is being pushed on. It is terrible to sit passive when you're a full health tank, especially one that is basically a heavy that has 3k DPM that could easily support the team in the front line. I mean, anybody that tries standing up for that E4 is already in the wrong. Well, here we are, and let's see. We don't have that E4. They don't have the E4 either. That's good. Um, let's see, what do we have up against us? Leopard 1, uh, Leopard PTA, and a T-54E1. I'm gonna tell the team to go up the bridge if they would. Bro, bro, thanks, yo. Thank you. 
the bridge is such an important spot to get up early and trying to cross the opening right where our 121 is right now is one of the hardest things to do when you are getting there slower and when you have teammates like your yo and 183 drive directly in front of you it can make this a lot less of enjoyable an experience thankfully nobody has appeared to have gone this way so we didn't get shot because of that we are going to cross directly to the opening i would expect their team to send people to the opening right here so we're going to see if that is the case let's keep going keep going and nobody's over there okay good all right so let's see is anybody going to try and cross this right here is like the point of no return if you go past this this spot here you're going to get shot by me no matter what so we get a nice slap into the 57 heavy not too bad there you go 183 gets a bonk in as well pretty good now let's see if anybody else wants to cross as we can see, though, this is a really, really good position just to stop people from doing really anything. We can just chill here. We can stay side scraping. 5041 loses a crap ton of health for that. All right, we're just going to stay here, and then our 183 and the rest of the team should be able to get those clears. So, uh, yeah, this this is a win already. Um, I'm going to try and flank a bit because I think they have at least enough brain cell to no longer push that. So let's get into a side scrape over here. Let's wait for our turret to turn a little bit. Let's see anybody over here. Well, we got the E4. Let's load in a heat shell to guarantee the pen. There you go. You nice 360 damage shot into his vehicle. Let's reload again. E4 bounces us. There you go. Nice shot into his tank. And uh, just like that, we've already bled our enemies quite a bit. They're not enjoying our company. Let's see, is the Leopard going to drive up? Leopard does indeed drive up. We get a very, very nasty roll of 480. We can see just how strong this vehicle is at uh, at what we're doing right now. It's just such a good holding vehicle. It's got the DPM. It's got the side scraping potential. And it's got enough HP to get the job done. And when you add all these things together, it just creates such a good vehicle. Get a nice shot into the back of the Leopard. Just like that, we are at 2,800 damage, which is already pretty solid. We're going to load an AP shell into the back of the enemy 5041. Just like that, they only have two tanks left. A T-57 Heavy and an FE-2 and 5B-183. All right, well, let's see if we can squeeze on through and aim it on the 183. There you go. Nice shot. Let's keep on moving up. Let's see if we can get any damage into the 57 Heavy, possibly. But he is completely bailing. All right, well, I think it'll be smarter to go this way then yeah just like the 113 let's see if we can cut him off and get a nice little slap a rooney into his vehicle aiming and bonk there you go nice shot Emil's gonna get a chunk in as well there you go and that is indeed a win 3700 damage pretty solid battle battle yes battle overall and uh yeah i mean the 113's been doing a pretty good job at this point even if we lose we are doing so good that I'm happy. I mean, this is a good day for stats. Sometimes you try to do one of these videos. I had one day where I was gonna, yeah, the 114 SP2, I was doing a broke, or sorry, my brain lost. I was thinking of a different channel. I was doing a play to lose video, and the first game I played was a loss. So I was like, okay, obviously I'm not gonna do a first game loss. That's a waste of a time. So I recorded a second battle, loss. Recorded a third battle, loss. So it took me four games to finally get our win streak going. And uh, even if you have a bunch of wins after that, you can still obviously hurt your stats. So today, I've only... I'm 100% in the 113 so far. So, yeah, I, I, as I said, if we lose at this point, I, I'm actually a very happy, happy man. So what do we have up against us? AMX 50B, okay. Patton, Sheridan, those are going to be strong tanks that can work the, the mid-hill hull down. We have a bat chat... It's interesting to see a bat check going to mid hill. Like, I don't mind the spots. That's good, because the vehicle does have the most view range into your 10. If the bat chat detects them going over towards seaside, that'll be really solid. But then the bat needs to do that, because right now the bat chat's not doing anything in, in terms of spotting. So let's see. We got the AMX 50 in front of us. And there you go. Nice 450 damage roll into his vehicle. And look, guys, it's a classic NA player who literally has no clue what he's doing. Our bat chat also just bled a lot of health for no reason, though. You can see they got some tanks off to the side. 50B, the Patton. All right. Let's aim in. Oh, that was a, a spicy shell. That so close to hitting. All right. Well, they don't have too many uh, deadly TDs, so let's just drive up. 
Yeah! Nice HE into the enemy Sheridan, but they do have the Fosh off to the side. It's aiming on his vehicle. He is running the autoloader, which is an interesting... Uh, I mean, it's not interesting. It's quite common, but... Okay, we got the conk off to the side, but we may have killed that Sheridan. Yes, we did. I baited the Sheridan down the hill, which allowed our and or our teammate to finish him off. So let's see. Nice shot to the enemy K91. Big low roll, but a pen's a pen, so I can't really get all too mad. All right, uh, let's see what we can do at this point. We know that the Fosh was last spotted right over there, but I... Camo values moment. Something that a lot of people don't know is that uh, heavies don't have a lot of your range, and... TDs have a lot of camo, so even though Wargaming did nerf their view range a lot, doesn't really take away from the fact that the Fosh still will outspot us. I saw him down here. Come on. Did he just decide not to, uh, not to keep going? Interesting. Well, I'm gonna send him. Oh, we got the 50B off to the side. Oh, we got the Fosh. Okay. Well, I'm gonna shoot the 50B if I can. There you go. Nice shot. Sweet. Alright, let's push up. The Fosh cannot kill me in two shots. So because of that, we should be okay here. Yeah, 492. We're just gonna back up. We're gonna waste a bit of his time if we can. Oh, that's even better. Yes! Alright. Nice tracking shot into the enemy Fosh. We got our adrenaline still ticking. Come on, get another shell. There you go. Another nice 400 damage roll into his vehicle. Oh, yeah. This is where, obviously, running an auto-loading gun is a bit of a downside versus the single-shot counterpart. Because this Fosh... Oh, you're done, bro. You wedged yourself up, and that's the end of you. I, uh, I hate to break it. Oh, you bounced again? Alright, listen. The first bounce, I somewhat understood. You had plenty of time to back up and shoot me. But the second bounce... You, you, I can't, I can't. 3,600 damage, 1,500 blocked. We got an easy win. And uh, yeah, I mean, another pretty solid battle. Can't really complain. Bat Chat, good job, actually. I mean, he could have done a little better. I'm not going to lie. He, he made some Sussler moves, but he did a good job. He killed the Sheridan. He did help us spot, so I'll give him credit. He did his job. We are, uh, we're on a roll right now. This is why I always find it funny when people try to complain like vehicles are now bad after the changes. As I've said time and time again, if you are a good enough player, you will make any tank work. Even if you play the worst tanks in the game. Now the 183, yeah, that's a bit sussler. Like you need to be in a platoon with a 183 to work. But that's the same for really any glass cannon. It's the same for a 4005, uh, Grill 15. If you're driving a vehicle that has very mediocre camo values and requires a lot of aiming and teamwork to get out shells, you're obviously not going to win as much. But if we take aside the few TDs like the 183, the 4005, and the Grill, if you put all the other tanks into play, you will win a lot of games if you know what you're doing. This is why I always tell people over and over and over. You can complain all you want about a vehicle like the 5A not being as good as it used to be. You can complain about the 113 losing a bit of DPM and Alpha. But at the end of the day, I'm over here averaging a lot of damage. Like, a lot of damage. And I'm getting wins. And uh, I'm having fun while doing it. And it's literal verbatim just proof that, uh, once again, you can complain all you want. But it doesn't take away from the fact that if you're not doing well in the tank, it still requires some skill. So we're going to aim it on the side of the 114. Ah, oh, that's really unfortunate. We know the 183 is in the back because, uh, oh, my teammate almost got shot by him. Let's see, is that mouse going to keep going? Yes, he is. So we get another nice shot. Our Type 71, for some reason, did not think that the mouse was going to go there, though. Let's see, there's the 114. I can't poke any more, but I'm also not too worried uh, the reason I can't poke anymore is because they have a 183 in the back. That's obviously a bit of a, a threat, so let's aim it on that 183. There you go, nice 380 damage shot. Bro, what is our type doing? I'm so confused. Like, why are you sitting sideways? Either way, I could care less. We're gonna move up. Let's see if that 183... Nah, doesn't look like he's gonna do it. Alright, let's just uh, push up a bit. Is that Grill over here? He was, okay. Grill is no longer over here. 183 does not appear. Oh, yes, he does. 183 does appear to be a threat still. All right, let's aim it on that 183 again. Nice 480 damage shot into his vehicle. Sweet. We are losing medium side, so we have to try and cut through this flank as fast as possible. He hashes, but it doesn't pen, and that's really good for us because that means now I can move up, hopefully, without bleeding a lot of health. 
We can get to the side of the mouse. Grill shot, so we're going to finish off the mouse. I'm going to try and cross before the grill is able to reload, just like so. Nice. Our Sheridan's going to roll behind the 114. Honestly, the fact that our team has bled as much health as they have is a bit of a bit of an L. But let's see. Please, E4. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't keep going. Don't keep going. Bro, bro, bro. Let me take the shot for you. I can't. I can't. I can't. Sometimes these players, we are going to lose this one. Uh, it definitely looks like it's going to be a loss. I'm going to get in the base cap. We we could win, um, but our Sheridan's going to die. Please don't go for that, Sheridan. Please. Please, bro. Stop. Oh, my rat. How is the Sheridan not dead yet? This is actually insane. We need to cap this base. We don't have a choice. Uh, Sheridan's gonna run. That's really, really good, obviously. I'm gonna shoot the grill. And, uh, let's see. Sheridan gets the pen out, but he does die. We need to reload. Oh, boy. But the 183's on our side. Tries to hash us. Fails it. We get a nice pen into you. Now we're gonna turn towards the grill. And let's see, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We need to be able to get this clear on the grill. All right, chunk, there you go. That's obviously really, really important. Pull forwards before the 183 is able to hit us. All right, now we can get into a side scrape. He shouldn't guess, all right, nice. Low to heat shell, finish him off. Holy crap, we are actually winning this engagement now. 4202 bounces us. We are up on base cap, and uh, wow, that's actually insane. We track him, but... We are too high up on cap. There's no way this 4202 can win this. That is actually insane. We carried this like crazy, guys. Woo! All right, well, there you go. One nice shell into the 4202. We're going to reload again. Don't know if I'm going to be able to get another out. Unfortunate. But you know what? We definitely gave our team this win. Our Sheridan was so freaking lucky. Like, legitimately the luckiest player I've ever seen. The fact that he got away with running around circles and... The 183 that shot at us fired Hesh two times, didn't pen it, right? And then he shoots HE, or he shoots AP at the Sheridan for some reason. And because of that, it bounces the Sheridan. Like, you did a decent job. 3,700's pretty good. But, bro, if you ever watch this video, you need to, you need to figure out what the heck you're doing. That was really sus maneuvers there. It also could have been an easy win if our E4 had just let me take the shot for him. I do not know why the E4 thought it would be a good decision to just blunder right out in the open when I could have taken the hit. He could have backed up and he would have been completely fine. Sometimes people get me very confused. It's it's either we have an E4 camping in our spawn the entire game, or we have an E4 yoloing out into the front line. But again, a win's a win. I'm quite confident if we were in any other heavy, that would have been a loss. Um, unless we had a lot of DPM, like maybe a triple seven could have won that, but the triple seven doesn't have the traverse speed capabilities that the 113 has. So we are going to go towards town. They have two mediums, a TVP and a boss Chalteon 25 ton, but our whole team is going towards town. So because of that, I feel like it's just more beneficial to go to town. We are, I don't like our bat chat going that far up. I'm going to be honest. I'd much rather have our bat chat sit in this position here. See if we can get a shell into the TVP. Let's aim right here. Come on. Back up. You're going to at some point. Come on. Really? Really? What is this guy doing? I'll wait. I mean, at some point, he's going to back up. He's very close to. Come on. Come on. Really? Well, he gets shot again. Um, wow. The moment... I, I can't. I don't even know what he's doing. All right. Well, I thought I was being big brain, but I guess not. I have to help out my yo, like, now. Actually, I don't know what to do here. Our yo is dead, and there's nothing I can do about that. He way over-aggressed. Uh, yeah, we got a pen into the E100 somehow, but the yo is dead, and that's already bad. Oh, boy. This is not looking like a win, um, because the Yag's off to this side here. Yeah. Um, we've had a lot of sus games today. This one is looking almost a little too sus for a victory. I'm going to try and finish off this Yag, but chances are that it's not looking like it's going to be a good one. Let's uh, keep shooting him as much as possible. We got Chungus. I'm going to try and stop this Yag from shooting him. There you go. Another nice... Oh, very lucky bounce. Very lucky bounce. Chungus finishes him off. Okay, not a bad shot. Let's aim it on the uh, VK, aiming, and there you go, nice hit. Chungus almost blocked it, but we're all good. 
We need to go, guys. We need to attack. Like, I'm taking these shots for you. We need to go. I'm gonna push right in between these guys, and um, we're just gonna have to hope that my team helps me. That's really all we can do right now. So let's get another shell into the E100. Please, V4, finish them off. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good. Good. All right. Let's aim it on the VK90 lower plate. Sweet. That was super important. Got the Kron on our rear now, but the VK did shoot, so we're gonna reload again. Get another nice shot out, but this is looking hella sus right now. I'm not gonna lie. Let's uh, let's back up. Let's aim it on the lower plate. Mm, I can't finish him off though. Chungus bounces. That's even worse. Oh boy. All right. Well, let's reload. Should be able to finish off the VK. There you go. Nice clear. Got the Kron off to the side. Uh, I'm going to tell him to finish off that player. All right. Let's see if we can hold this. Oh boy. That's not good. Back up. Back up. Back up. Let's aim it on the Kron. Oh, that's the end of me. Unless he bounces. No. Yeah. This game was not winnable. Our... Uh, our yo through this. Our V4 was fine, and um, Chungus was good. I mean, Chungus, he was a really bad player when he started playing this game, but he's actually fairly decent now, which is uh, not too bad. But unfortunately, when your mediums decide to YOLO the enemy team, it's, it's not going to go well. I mean, I tried to get that TVP shot, as you saw. I tried my best to shoot him, but it didn't matter. We did 3,800 damage. Pretty solid overall. I mean, Chungus, I'll give you credit. You did a good job, so I will give you a thumbs up. Um, V4 did okay, but then the rest of these guys, I mean, the Yo alone probably threw this game. He he definitely should have just waited for his team. Why would you YOLO aggressive when you see the enemy team has a bunch of German Super Heavies, a VK90, an E100, a Yag? Why would you do that? If you had just stayed passive and you'd waited for me and the Chieftain to push up after looking at mid, you probably would have been fine. Uh, the 2 6 I don't know what he did. The rest of the team definitely should have just played a little more passive. Chilled at the edge of town, bled the enemy if they tried pushing on us and spotted them. Instead, uh, yeah, it just looks like there was two pushes going on at the same time. But that was a very, very solid battle. Let us take a look at how much damage we were able to do here. Let me pull up a tab. Let's go to Blitzstars. All right, here we go. Let's see how we were able to do... Today, tier 10, 91% with 4,036 games, a total of 12 battles played. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the 113 is an amazing tank. Legit, anybody that says otherwise, here's your proof. Prove me wrong. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.